play, obviously, a tough opponent in the first weekend, a very good Marshall team. Uh, what did you see from your basketball team this weekend that maybe you liked and something that you know you got to work on? Yeah, it was great to be back in Conference USA play. It feels like a long time. Um, both teams had a layoff after Christmas, but um, you know, jumped right into it, and you jump right into it with two games, which is which is unique and a great challenge for for both teams. Uh, thought we played very very hard in both games. Uh, the first game was one of those games where not a whole lot of points separated each team for for most of the game. Uh, we were able to just kind of pull away there a little bit at the end, but it was really a, a two possession game, uh, really throughout. And thought our defense was was good. Uh, thought we executed well, uh, even after the layoff, and was fortunate to get a, a win against a good Marshall team on Friday. As we went into Saturday, that's the unique part. I've never in my career played the same team two days in a row like this. It's uh, you just got that feeling of um, of hey, we know each other very well now. Now it's going to come down to executing even better. And I thought we did that for about another 25 minutes. Uh, we built a lead, uh, had a good run. It just kind of kept stretching. And then uh, Marshall, which is so capable of, of doing, went on their run. And then in the last three minutes of the game, just like on Friday night, it was a one to two possession game. And uh, they made more plays down the stretch than we did. So, of course, disappointed that we didn't get two wins. Uh, thought that we learned a lot about our team and um, a lot of different aspects that we've got to be able to grow from. Questions for Eric? Go ahead, Emma Kate. Yeah, hey, Coach. You kind of touched on this a second ago, talking about how it's so unique to have back-to-back -back games uh, this season. So kind of expand on the challenges that presents. Um, obviously, you guys know each other really well, like you said, and like depth be really important but I've noticed a lot of split series looking around college basketball so kind of from the coaching perspective the challenges it presents and how you guys can kind of learn from this past week moving forward yeah you know there's there's really two aspects of it always there's the physical aspect and then there's the mental aspect the physical is important not nearly as much as mental but physically you got a quick turnaround we played at 6 30 on Friday turn around and play at 6 on Saturday not a lot of time or really energy that you can use to uh, develop another practice plan, make a ton of changes where you're practicing them live and at full speed. So we've talked about having some just different things in our back pocket that we might be able to go to. Um, but the one of the things that happens from Friday night is each team gets the other team's play calls and you recognize things and it, then it comes down to really no matter what you run, you've got to run it really, really well. and. Um, You've got to be sharper. You've got to be tougher, and um, and then also there's the mental aspect of uh, you know whether you've lost the first game or you've won the first game of being able to turn that page quickly from either the joy of winning or the disappointment of losing. So it's um, it's different, but it's something that we certainly have got to get better at and uh, and work towards this week. Corey. Eric, I know you and I talked before the season about kind of a, a sort of a, a different brand of basketball that he could bring to this team than maybe a whole lot of people that come and watch you guys on either year off basis had seen before. But now that you've had, you know, roughly 10, 10 12 games to, to really see him in action and, and bring his flair to this team, what what about him coming in? See, this time last year he was playing high school basketball. How has he been able to come in and really be a, a game changer and a difference maker for you guys so early in his career? Well, Junior's got really good feel, number one. He's a, he's a guy that was a guard growing up and hit a growth spurt. And um, we always knew that he could, he could have a presence on the inside, and that he could pass, that we thought that he'd be able to score. Um, of course, the things that you, you look at is you know, the, the speed of the game, the shot clock, the longer floor, like there's a number of things that make the college game so much different, but he's adjusted nicely to those um, aspects. And those are things that you find out once you get into practice and you get going. Uh, of course, I think he's got a high ceiling to keep getting better and better. Um, you know, one of the things that happens to, to freshmen is, you know, typically uh, guys that got to get a whole lot stronger, be able to uh, get used to the physicality. He, he's got some of that, 
but he comes in with, with a frame that's able to hold people off and be able to uh, post and work on different things um, there and, and on the defensive end. But I think he's added a real dimension to us that we haven't had, um, and it complements the other guy as well. Questions? Boat? You talked about Lofton ceiling, high ceiling. Obviously, it's been a, a really strange year, hard for anybody to get going. Just how much of his potential have we seen, and, and what are the, some of the areas he can get better in? Yeah, I think that with any young player, there's so much growth. And, and, and matter of fact, I think for, even for older players, there's still great room to grow uh, in a lot of areas. I think for him, it's, uh, I think at, at some point he's going to be able to extend his shooting, um, keep working on his free throw, but even extend out to three, um, just to keep getting in better and better shape, to, to play longer stretches, and, and, and then be able to do other things with his right hand on top of his left hand. Um, but I, I like the versatility that he has to be able to pass, to be able to dribble the basketball, and I just think that he's going to continue to, with, with the experience, get more and more comfortable and confident. Eric, Tim McKay kind of mentioned this in passing earlier, but I wanted to get your thoughts on this. Um, is it perhaps an unintended consequence for how Conference USA decided to structure this thing with teams playing back-to-back -back nights? And there's been a ton of splits. I think there was only one team, I think, in the league in the, in the opening weekend that went 2-0 and against their opponent. Do you think the way the, the, the schedule has been structured that it could open up this thing for almost anybody to win the league this year? You know, it's, I do think it's going to add to the parity of the league. I think this league is very deep this year. It has been. Uh, but in this year particularly, I, I just think that it's going to be um, – there's going to be a lot of close games. I think there's going to be a lot of splits. I think there's just a lot of really good players, coaches, programs in this league. And uh, no matter where you go, um, I think there's that balance of you go on the road – um, maybe you drop the first one, but you're able to get the second one, uh, or vice versa at home. I, I just think that it's going to add a whole lot because there's a, a confidence level that you can bring and a comfort that you can bring from one game to the next. Um, but I think you know a close conference race down the stretch is very, very possible. Uh, like I said, there's some really good teams in this league, top to bottom. There's a lot of good players back. There's a lot of age in this league right now. So when you couple all that together on top of all the uncertainties and the other variables that come into uh, contact tracing and having a guy out on top of the normal years where you might have an injury uh, to go along with the schedule, I, I think it can make for a very, very fascinating race. Eric, I'm going to ask you a question uh, as far as what was the coaches' discussions, what, did, what was said from the conference end when the decision was made to go divisionals this year on an east and a west with basketball, which we've never done before, uh, and I guess kind of why and then what your thoughts are from a coaching perspective. I know there's been discussions uh, several years ago at conference meetings about doing something like that in a model similar to football, but of course in basketball you've got uh, – complexities with playing a full schedule. Um, I think what happened and what the uh, recommendation was to go along with figuring out a way to seed the tournament and with the 12 games be able to have a, a real sure and fast and fair way to look at your division to, to try to create some variables that that seem to, to be fair and, uh, and then have some cross-divisional um, seeding in that first round. But it's still going to be complicated. We don't know what the next month or the next two months look like. And if we've got to adjust, we've got to adjust just like we've done everything all season long. Questions? Emma Kate? Yeah, looking forward to this weekend. Um, facing preseason favorite. Obviously, they've got a lot going on for them as well. Kind of just talk to you about the challenges that they present um, and how you guys are preparing for that. Yeah, they're really good, um, and they, they've got 
an inside-outside combination in, in a number of guys from from Bassey on the interior to Hollingsworth on the perimeter, guys that have been in their program now three and four years that have experienced a lot of success. Um, and then they've got other guys that have been there. They're an old team with experience and then experience together and, and won a lot of, have won a lot of games. And they're, they've been off to a good start. They've played a, a good non-conference schedule or they've, they've traveled to different parts of the country and they've picked up some good wins. So it's a... Uh, it's a team that we've got to be really ready for to guard the interior, guard the perimeter. Um, they're good in transition. They mix up their defenses, and um, you know we've had some good games with them in the past. Um, and they're very, very similar to the way they've been. So it's going to be something that we've got to be able to go in there and get off to a good start. We've got to defend for a full 40 minutes and uh, take care of the basketball because when you don't, they, they really get it going on the other end. Corey? Eric, uh, with the way Junior's been playing, with the way Isaiah Crawford has been playing, uh, I think the last handful of games, um, I want to say he's close to 14 points a game, I believe, and uh, putting up a lot of rebounds for you guys as well. How, how much of, a, of an asset are, are those two guys in the post going to be, uh, you know, having to uh, to play alongside with Bassey down low uh, in the next uh, two games, and just just what kind of what kind of role they can be able to play for you guys uh, during this two game series with Western Kentucky? Yeah, it's great to develop young depth, and um, you know we've got some experience on this roster. Very proud of Isaiah and how he's continued to push forward after his injury last year. Um, you know, you think about it, he's only he only played a, a few conference games last year before getting hurt, and is growing. Um, he's becoming more and more confident, and he's a guy that's got great versatility. So we feel like we can do some things with him on the perimeter as well as on the inside. He can also drive it and create for others. And then, of course, with with both Junior and Andrew Gordon, we feel like we've got some size. Uh, to be able to guard one-on-one, -on -one, but you can also do some different things uh, with our post defense. So, um, you know, we, we feel like we've got some options and some depth uh, at multiple spots, and we're going to need production out of everybody.